Is eye dominance causing problems with your timing or your consistency or some other aspect of your game? That's what I'm going to be answering in this video because more and more people are talking about eye dominance. And I think the main reason for this is that a really famous coach that's got a lot of videos on YouTube now often does eye dominance assessments with his players. Now, assessments are really simple for eye dominance. You just hold your hands out in front with a small target. So I'm looking at the camera lens right now. I can see it with both my eyes. If I close my left eye, I can still see the camera lens. If I close my right eye, I can't. The camera lens is hidden behind my hand. So that tells me that my right eye is dominant. So the coach that's making these videos is doing that assessment with players and then making adjustments to their technique, whether it's the serve or talking about hitting more open stance relative to neutral stance ground strokes. Now, I'm not as experienced in terms of tennis coaching as that coach. He's one of the best coaches on the planet, but I'm very highly trained in assessing people's visual systems, working with people's visual systems. I've been very fortunate and love to learn from a couple of the top doctors on the planet when it comes to this stuff. And personally, I would never make adjustments based on one vision assessment alone. It's really important for you to understand that everybody has a dominant eye. Every single player in the world has a dominant eye, including all the best players in the world that have both got amazing forehands, backhands, serves, and volleys. As far as I'm aware, there's only one bit of research been done on eye dominance in tennis, and it didn't really show too much. It wasn't a big enough sample size and really wasn't anything that I would use kind of that data to make changes. Now, when it comes to the visual system, eye dominance is a thing. We can't change it, but there are multiple different visual skills that are really important in tennis. Your eyes need to be able to track the ball efficiently. Now, the way that that works, we've got eye muscles that move our eyes, and then we've got brain areas that move our eyes in different directions. Now, the, the funny thing is, or the cool thing is, that if I track something going from left to right, it's a slightly different area of the brain making that happen to if I track something going from right to left. So often when you assess tennis players, they'll be really good at tracking one way and not so good at tracking another way. And that is the sort of thing that tends to cause issues with either the forehand or the backhand or timing or consistency. But there's other visual skills as well. If you're tracking a ball that's moving quickly, you don't actually follow it nice and smoothly like that. It's moving too quickly. So your eyes actually have to make lots of fast little jumps. So they predict where the ball is going. They jump ahead, jump ahead, jump ahead. And that's how it works. So again, before I made adjustments, I would want to test the accuracy and the speed and the quality of these fast eye switches. So when someone looks at a target quickly, do the eyes find that target quickly or do they bounce around? Do they fall short of the target? Do they go past the target? Because these are the sort of visual deficits that most people don't realize they've got that are actually causing problems within their strokes. Another key area in terms of what you do on court is gonna be your spatial awareness, your ability to predict distance and to be able to judge how far things are away. Because if you're the sort of person that prepares late for your shots, that's just about always because your visual system can't predict where the ball's going. If you tend to get too close to the ball, you've got spacing issues, you've got issues with your timing. A lot of that stuff is to do with your ability to accurately judge distance and depth and how far things are away. And we've got different assessments that we can do for that as well. We can test the coordination between our eyes to see how they're functioning. We can test for something called visual suppression to see whether the brain is able to use both images correctly because often if the brain can't use both images correctly that's going to create issues in that area and these are the sorts of things that really hold players back on court so i'm not saying that eye dominance is completely insignificant because it does have a, a tiny like i mean tiny little impact but it doesn't have the sort of impact that most people think it does and it's getting blamed for a lot of things when there's actually a lot of other stuff going on now a lot of this kind of thought process stemmed from watching Federer and when he hits his forehand he keeps his head still on his forehand and he hits through it and what people are saying is okay because he's left eye dominant he turns his head onto contact so that he can see the ball on and off the target with his left eye and it kind of makes a little bit of sense although our brain uses both eyes together for good spatial awareness and distance judgment but he does the same thing on his backhand keeps his head very still and we've got players like Medvedev we've got players like Alcarez who also keep their head really still on contact now are they both left eye dominant or right eye dominant I don't know the answer to that but we've also got a lot of research now on something called quiet eye and what they find is that high level performers in all 
contact sports, ball contact sports, tennis, squash, badminton, baseball, golf, high level performers, the best athletes tend to keep their visual system focused on that contact point, that target for just a little bit longer than everyone else. So tracking the ball with your head is actually a really good thing to do. And if you think about it, the ball's coming towards you, your head is facing the ball, both eyes are easily able to see it. As it comes closer to you, your head rotates at the same time. Your both eyes are tracking things simultaneously. So in terms of eye dominance, my recommendation is gonna to be to not worry about it all that much. You can't change it. Honestly, it will not be the problem based on my opinion and a lot of the other people I've spoken to who are, who are you know, really knowledgeable in visual neurology and that side of things. So I wouldn't worry about it. I would think about doing other assessments. And if you'd like some help with that, I've made another video. You should check it out. It's gonna take you through two assessments that are gonna be really important for timing. So we're gonna assess eye coordination, whether they can work in coordination with each other. We're also gonna test for visual suppression. And then it's gonna take you through some different assessments that might also be important for your timing on court. So you definitely wanna check that out if you're interested in learning more about vision in tennis.